Hi and welcome. We've now seen two ways to pull up uh, objects from databases using Hibernate. The first way is by configuring entity objects and then doing a session.get of the entity objects which returns the object and also the associations. The second way is by using Hibernate query language, writing queries and uh, pulling up objects depending on our requirements. So the first object is the most basic way where uh, you have limited control and uh, you need to specify the object or the entity that you need to extract. And the second way has a slightly more, uh, you know, it gives you slightly more control in that you can uh, specify where clauses, you can, um, you can, ha you can fine grain the, you know, the constraints that you want to impose on the data that you're uh, pulling up from the database. So the second way is uh, the Hibernate query language. So now we're going to look at the third way to uh, extract data from uh, the database using Hibernate. And I'll tell you some of the problems of using Hibernate query language and uh, how this third way addresses those problems. We'll look at the first problem. See, we've seen uh, the named query in our previous tutorial. So let's let's remove the name native query. Okay, so we have this named query and the named query is nothing but uh, Hibernate query language. And uh, we're specifying uh, all the parameter placeholders here and then we're substituting the parameters in our application. Now, generally, no, not only this named query, even if you're using simple HQL and, you know, running the directly, HQL after a point is not very different from uh, SQL, you know, you have uh, from, you have where clauses, you have joins. So all these are very similar to SQL and uh, in a real life scenario, a real life application, most of the times you'll have a complex query, whether it's uh, SQL or HQL query is going to be fairly complex and uh, as the query grows it becomes bigger and bigger and becomes tougher to maintain so you want to make changes you will you know you'll end up with uh, a query that goes for uh, 15 20 lines and uh, making a change involves finding out exactly where it is that you want to modify but then making a modification there you need to make sure you're taking care of all the parentheses you'll have a whole lot of uh, parentheses query inside a query and all that stuff so anybody who has actually uh, you know uh, gone through the pain of changing an existing uh, huge query will understand what i'm trying to say here so yeah the basic point is that even though we are using hql which deals with objects rather than tables and all that that's all fine but the point is that essentially it is still a query language that follows the same format as SQL. And uh, you have to, first of all, know SQL in order to make the changes. And secondly, as the, you know, the parameters and the constraints grow, the query is going to grow and become big and it becomes hard to maintain. And uh, this is a problem that we're going to address by looking at a different way in which we can pull up data in Hibernate. And this is by using a criteria API. That's something that we're going to look at in this tutorial. So what does a criteria API look like? So here we have uh, the session dot get query and uh, we're specifying the query HQL directly or we can specify the query here in the core. Now what we're going to do is instead of specifying any HQL query, we're going to look at how to get the records by specifying our criteria using the criteria API. So instead of the query object, I will create a criteria object. Session dot, I will use a method called create criteria. Now the session dot create criteria takes a class as an argument. We'll, we'll look at uh, string later, but let's consider this one. Obsession.create criteria takes a class as an argument. So let's choose this. And uh, here I'll have to specify the name of the class. Uh, this is user details dot class. Okay, so now I'll have to import criteria 
from org dot hibernate so i've imported that so what i'm doing here is i'm i'm telling hibernate that i need to create a criteria and uh, i'm creating this criteria for the user details dot class a criteria is more like a, you know a where clause you know we are specifying what is the criteria that you need uh, to be fulfilled for the data that you are interested in so i can specify conditions here and uh, you know that we'll look at that in a minute but uh, here what we are saying is that all the conditions that i'm going to apply subsequently will apply for user details so it knows what table it needs to apply the where clause to so now that i've specified that i'm interested in the user details now i need to say what particular records i'm interested in so what i do is i do a criteria dot there is this add method okay so i use the add method now here I can add any restrictions that I want. Let's say I want to pull up um, the user with the name user10. So this is a restriction that I add to this criteria. So I use restrictions. I need to create a new restriction. So I say restrictions dot eq. So what I'm saying is I'm creating an equal restriction. So I want to say this is equal to something. So uh, I'll just say user name because I need to give this inside a string. Comma user ten. Okay, now I need to import restrictions as well. Okay, now that I've created this restriction, all I need to do is, instead of using a query dot list, I use criteria dot list. Criteria also has a list method and uh, it's gonna return the list of users. So yeah, let's have a look at this one more time. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a criteria object. A criteria object is kind of like a where clause where you say these are the restrictions that I need to impose. Now the criteria object needs to know for which table or which entity you're imposing the restrictions. So that's the first thing that you mention. The first thing you mention is what object or what list of objects you're looking at. Right now we are looking at a user details object. So I mentioned the class here in my create criteria. Now that I've established what entity I'm looking at, now I need to set the criteria for that entity. I need to say, get me only these records. If you want all the records, you can skip this step, which is to add the restrictions. But if you need only a particular subset of records, then you need to add restrictions. And the way to add restrictions is by using criteria.add. In my criteria.add, I can add any restriction that I want. In this example, I'm adding a restriction of equals. I want a restriction where one of the column names or one of the properties equals a value that I'm specifying. So I want username to be equal to user10. So here you have a lot of other restrictions. You have greater than, less than, and all that. We're, we're going to look at that later. But in this example, I'm going to lo I'm looking at an equals restriction. So I want to pull up all the records where the username equals user10. So this restriction is something that I'm going to create here and pass it on to the criteria.add. So I can add as many restrictions as I want here. But uh, once I'm done with adding all the restrictions, when I do a criteria.list, so first it's going to look at this entity, uh, the class that I mentioned here. And for this entity, it's going to apply all the restrictions that I've added here. Here in this case, it's just an equal restriction. So it's going to apply this equal restriction and get the list of users where the username is equal to user 10, as this is the only restriction we've applied here. So now let's run this and, uh, and we'll see what is the output. There you go, it's returned user 10 because this is the only record in this list of entities that satisfies 
this criteria restriction. 